If you're new to cruising, it can be a different experience compared to traveling everywhere else in the world. So today, I've got things that I would tell anybody who's new to cruise ship travel what to expect up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RealGreenBlog.com. Warm, sunny day, savory food at every turn, and great memories. Taking your first cruise has some pretty high expectations for a great vacation experience. I think anybody who's considering a cruise vacation probably has those kind of images in their mind when they're planning a cruise. And certainly, when you're new to cruising, there's all sorts of emotions you may be feeling, including excitement, anxiety, impatience, and of course, hope. So in talking with new cruisers over the years, I'm constantly reminded of some of these highs and lows in this pre-vacation process for a lot of people when they're planning their very first cruise. Now, for me, I have over 20 years of cruising experience under my belt, so I go into almost any cruise with a sort of autopilot sense to planning the process. My brain is tuned to what to expect and what to do next in a variety of scenarios, but obviously... I'm coming at it from a completely different approach than someone who's brand new. And based on a lot of the comments we see here on our YouTube channel and comments over on realcreamblog.com, there's a lot of people who are new to cruising who have a lot of concerns. And I guess anxiety is a good way to describe it. So I wanted to talk about the things that if you're brand new to cruising, you should expect or you should know because there are some things that are super important. I'm not talking about necessarily like, you know, you should go to this restaurant or that place or skip this shore excursion. We're not getting that nitty and gritty. What we're trying to do is share the overall overarching approach to cruising that you should expect. Because uh, at the end of the day, there's plenty of rookie cruise mistakes along the way that anybody can make. But I really wanted to focus on today what it feels like when you're starting out and have a mind filled with questions, anxieties, and concerns. So if you're new to cruise ships and looking for advice to help you prepare, here are 12 tips that I would tell any new traveler to help them avoid some of these early mistakes. Number one, don't worry. It may feel daunting when you look at all the things to consider when booking a cruise, like which cabin to choose, how to pick the right ship, what's the best shore excursion, when should I book my flights, and which hotel should I stay at before my cruise. It's really easy to feel overwhelmed as soon as you book that cruise and you decide to dive into the details. But remember, you're very capable of handling this kind of a trip, and it's not nearly as complicated as it may seem like in the first 15 seconds after booking your cruise. By virtue of the fact that you're asking these questions, you're already many steps ahead of most other cruisers that will be on your ship. Unfortunately, most people on a cruise ship book the ship, and then that's about it. That's all the planning they do. They may buy a drink package or internet plan before the cruise because of the Royal Caribbean marketing emails that they get, but most people simply show up for their vacation. This sets them up for a lot more pitfalls than you because you're already asking the right questions. A cruise ship vacation is designed to be very approachable. So even if you do no research in advance, you'll still probably have a good time on board. Let's not mix facts about this. But the reality is so much is included compared to a land vacation, so it's really easy to plan around. You'll make mistakes, everybody does, including myself, I do that quite often in fact, but that's just part of the experience. The good news is by being on this YouTube channel and learning about cruises, you're already going to sidestep a few common pitfalls. And at the end of the cruise, you're very likely to come away loving the experience and wanting to book another trip. Number two, remember everybody is in the same, I say boat, but you shouldn't say a boat, it's a ship. Everyone's in the same ship as you. Something very different about a cruise and a land vacation is how much more talkative and friendly cruise ship passengers are than what you're used to on land. As a classic example, in an elevator or shore excursion, or even at the blackjack table, you'll run into other guests and it's easy to ignore them off the bat because that's what you'd probably do in your regular life. But you're on a cruise ship, and you know what? They're probably new to cruising too, and if they aren't, you may be able to learn a lot from them. Now, I am no social butterfly by any means, but simply saying hello is a great first step. You don't have to make friends with everybody you meet, but people on a cruise ship that cruise a lot will tell you that the fellow passengers they meet are often a real highlight of the cruise. And this applies to crew members as well, by the way. Crew members are working on board, but they're people too. Many love to get to know their guests and have plenty of interesting and amusing stories to share. So don't be afraid to take a minute and talk to your stateroom attendant, waiter, bartender, next cruise agent, or even trivia host. They come from all over the world, and I found that the more crew members I meet, the more respect I have for what they do. Plus, you'll learn all sorts of information about the places they visited, countries they call home, and fun insights into the cruise experience. The next thing I would tell anybody that's brand new to cruising is you really want to learn as much as you can before you get on board. Knowledge is power, 
isn't just something we tell our kids so that they'll study harder in school. It's a fact when it comes to travel. The more you know about your ship and the itinerary, the better prepared you'll be and less likely to waste time or money along the way. If there's a regret I hear from new cruisers the most, it's that they wish they knew about something before they ever went on their first cruise. So some easy ways to learn about your cruise are to read an old cruise compass. We keep an archive of them at royalcarmineblog.com. Pre-purchase some of the extra add-ons before your cruise save money and learn about dress codes. Those are some basic starting points. Number four, choose your cruise ship based on what is important to you. There are so many cruise ships in Royal Caribbean's fleet, so when choosing the right one, prioritize what you care about. The TV commercials show all these fun things you can do on board, but are you actually going to be interested in water slides, surf simulators, or observational pods? Are you looking for water slides? Skip the vision class. Need a full Broadway show? Liberty of the Seas has it, but Freedom of the Seas doesn't. Want a nursery for your toddler? Don't book Explorer of the Seas. Don't feel like you have to book the ship that has the most to do on board just because it has everything. You may find a great choice in other ships too because it just has what you need. Number five, pack light. Now, I admit I'm about to preach about something that I don't do myself, but it's a struggle, but overpacking is so tempting when it comes to a cruise. The fear of getting on board a cruise ship only to realize you forgot something really important is all too real a concern. I think all too often people pack for just in case and what if scenarios instead of the reality of the trip. While it can be tempting to bring more than you need just in case, remember this, you can wear clothing more than once, such as pants or shorts. Plus, you can send clothes out to be dry cleaned and it won't be terribly expensive. Pack light and you'll have less to carry, saving you the hassle and stress of lugging suitcases around that airport. Number six, super important, get travel insurance. Whether you're a cruise veteran or you're brand new to cruising, don't leave home without making sure you're protected in case something goes wrong. Between lost luggage, broken bones, medical emergencies, deaths in the family, and a host of other unexpected problems, life gets in the way. So to ensure you're protected, buy travel insurance. I never go on a cruise now without it because I know how quickly things can go sideways. You never know what might happen, so make sure you're protected. It also gives you peace of mind and helps you travel with confidence. Number seven, go with the flow. This is a really important mantra when it comes to cruise ship travel. No matter how well you plan your cruise, something will go awry. You can plan out every day, but you'll rush around and be unhappy if there are any glitches in your well-curated schedule. And there will be hiccups and glitches and all kinds of inconveniences, both major and minor. But I think it's a really good idea to plan ahead and look forward to certain activities, but you should also be prepared to sometimes adopt a que sera sera approach if things don't go your way. Is it raining the day you wanted to go swimming? The performance you booked canceled? Restaurant you wanted booked up? you'll still have a good time doing something else. The bottom line is don't let an inconvenience or cancellation for that matter, ruin your entire cruise. Shrug your shoulders and look for something else you can do to make up for it. If you run into a true game stopping issue, then leverage that really good travel agent I talked about earlier that you booked your cruise with and they can get on top of it as well. The number eight item on things I would tell anybody who's new to cruise ship travel is take a tour of the ship on the first day. Now, we have some amazing, if I do say so myself, walkthrough tours of Royal Caribbean cruise ships here on our YouTube channel that you can watch over and over and over again. And I'd recommend that as well. But it's also helpful to get your bearings once on board. It can be super helpful to get a lay of the land shortly after you board your ship. So that way, you can truly understand where your cabin is located relative to other amenities, restaurants, bars, and entertainment venues that appeal to you. After you board your ship, head to the pool deck and work your way down the ship, deck by deck, walking the main public areas on those decks. This is a great way to quickly acclimate yourself to the ship layout and set yourself up for a great start. We're up to number nine on our list, and that is do the online check-in as early as you can. Boy, this is really important because your time is everything on vacation. Once you clock out of work and head to that cruise ship, the amount of time starts to tick away. So don't waste any of it in the cruise terminal. Royal Caribbean provides a super easy way to do online check-in before the cruise. Check-in begins up to 45 days before the cruise sale date. So the first thing you want to do is download and install the Royal Caribbean app now. At the 45-day window, grab a check-in time immediately. You can return later in the app to complete the rest of the online check-in if you prefer. Then at some point before the cruise, finish everything in the online check-in. Yes, including taking that selfie photo. The more time you spend at home doing the check-in, the less you'll spend in the cruise terminal, and that means more time on the ship. Next up, use a good travel agent. Before you book any cruise, find a really good travel agent to work with. Yes, travel agents are still a thing, and they're invaluable when it comes to cruise ship travel, especially for anybody new to cruising. 
Note that I included the word good, as not all travel agents are created equal. A good travel agent has a great deal of experience with the cruise line you're sailing on and knows the ins and outs of the experience. They've been there, done that, and have a host of satisfied clients that swear by their travel agent experience. You might be thinking, booking a cruise can't be that hard. And you're right. The booking process is just the starting point for where a good agent comes into play because anybody can book a cruise. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm really talking about is everything else that comes with it. As a new cruiser, you're going to have a lot of questions. Certainly, there's plenty of videos here on this YouTube channel to help you answer some of them, but many questions are just going to be personal and related to your situation. Like, can you save more money by booking two cabs instead of one? How much more will it be to add another person to the reservation in a couple of months? What happens if Royal Caribbean accidentally cancels your tour? And what's the difference between refundable and non-refundable cruise fare? Basically, you don't yet know all the questions you'll have between now and when your cruise begins, but a good travel agent is there to help you along the way, and they're going to save you time, maybe even some money as well. And if it matters to you at all, I always use a travel agent to book my cruises. Now, a really common question I get here on YouTube is, okay, Matt, I want to use a travel agent, but how do I know a good one from a bad one? How do I find one? Where should I look? And my best advice to you is to get a recommendation from a family member, a friend, or somebody you trust, from somebody that's used a good travel agent and said, yes, I really like my travel agent for this reason. Personal recommendations are the way to go. My next bit of advice is if there's a problem, talk to somebody about it. The Royal Caribbean blog message boards are filled with people that come back from a cruise and complain about an issue that they could have gotten fixed on board. If something is not as expected or disappointing to you, don't just accept it. Instead, speak up while on board, not at home, while on board, and nicely inform crew members of the issue and ask how it can be resolved. If something is disappointing to you or not what you expected, you should seek out a crew member to remedy the problem. Whether it's a broken fixture in your stateroom, another guest causing a problem, or a medical concern, don't just suck it up and let it ruin your cruise. Crew members are there to make your cruise fantastic, and they will do what they can to address your concerns. Even if you think there probably is no chance they can do something, you never know the lengths that the crew will go to to enhance your trip. And the last thing I tell anybody who's new to cruise ship travel is get your travel documentation set. A really common rookie mistake is not checking that you have all the right documentation for a cruise. If you don't have a passport, be sure to get one. If you do have a passport, double check the expiration date and that it won't expire before your cruise ends. Make sure you've booked the cruise under your legal name, which matches what your passport has listed. Not only should you ask this question, but ask it well in advance of your cruise. All too often, people dig out their passports or birth certificates only to realize it's too late to get something changed. So there you have it, 12 things I would tell anybody new to cruise ship travel what to expect. Now, obviously, there's many more tips and advice and things like that, but I really wanted to boil it down to the most important overarching things that if you're brand new to cruising, you should think about. Let me know in the comments below. If you're not new to cruising, veteran, been there, done that, what would be your advice for someone who's brand new? And if you're still new to cruising, that's awesome. Let me know what is your number one concern about going on a cruise. Hopefully, we can answer some of your concerns down there in the comments below. If you like this video, found it helpful, or just enjoy videos about cruising in general, hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and we'll talk again real soon.